Hello everyone and welcome to the final installment in the opening series of um, the Sandwich House Defense Treaties by Grandmaster Hu Ronghua. This would be the fifth part of chapter 11 and this would be the final chapter in the book which discusses uh, various opening variations. Now, uh, as mentioned in earlier videos for chapter 11 this would be the position of discussion a short recap on how this was reached central cannon versus sandwich horse defense red foul chariot and chapter 10 and 11 would focus on red choosing to advance his seventh pawn that will counter in the same way and this would be the position of discussion for chapter 11 whereby red would charge his uh, chariot across the river to threaten to capture the black horse. Now in the first preceding four bots, uh, black there were several variations. The first would be R9 equals to 8, E3 plus 5, R1 plus 1 and in the last bot R9 plus 2. However in the fifth and final bot black would choose to play A4 plus 5 as a subtle prophylactic move and uh, in in retaliation or in retaliation of reds r2 plus 6 now moving a4 plus 5 early would uh, allow the black cannon to be protected and solidify the central file it will also give black the options of playing r9 equals to 8 or counter as needed later on in the game and it will also have the advantage of playing e3 plus 5 for development of the right chariot as a kingside chariot now, uh, there were four major variations that were discussed in the board. The first would be C8 plus 4, second C8 plus 2, R8 plus 7, and the last would be the 5-7 five, five, cannons C8 equals to 7. So, this is another lengthy board. So, let's, uh, let us begin with the first variation. Okay, in the first variation, Red would choose to be very blunt and aggressive, targeting the central pawn immediately with C8 plus 4. Now, Black would continue with playing E3 plus 5, and because the Black horse was congested, Red would choose to limit the development of this horse, forcing Black to defend in this manner, and this position would be similar to uh, bot 4, one of the variations in bot 4. Kingside Chariot. And at this point, Black Red would try to trade pawns to allow for development of his own horse and also free his uh, chariot from any stick attacks by Black. Now, at this point in time, Black would tempt red to play C9, uh, R9 plus 2 to protect the horse with this move because as can be seen with the kingside chariot at this position the horse cannot advance so uh, retreating the horse would not seem to be a good uh, option either uh, so how should how should uh, red re react now uh, instead of C6 plus 5 another move was discussed whereby Black would um, be very blunt and aggressive with R4 plus 7. However, this would not be a good move because Black would protect the horse and this would in effect be a this would be in effect be a fork. And Black would be placed in a dilemma if it traded Chariots, uh, Black would have used a chariot that an open chariot to trade for Red's closed chariot, so this would definitely not be a bargain. However, if Black tried to move the chariot away, he would have wasted a move in the process. So this would be a dilemma for <coughs> this would be a dilemma for uh, Black. So Red can be very satisfied with this situation, and that is why R4 plus 7 is not advocated. And instead, c6 plus 5 for, to threaten to capture the horse and 10 red to play r9 plus 2 would be advised. And this move, after forcing the red chariot to an undesirable position, black would then retreat his cannon immediately to, to, to his own short rank and target this chariot. 
and at this point in time now uh, earlier on by forcing red to play c9 plus 2 uh, the, the main motive behind it behind this uh, um, forcing red to play r9 plus 2 can be seen now because black would now be prepared to play c7 equals to 1 to threaten to capture the chariot which cannot move here as the black cannon had already controlled this file so red would be forced to play uh, p9 plus 1 to protect his chariot whereby red would lose his elephant in the process so black would have the advantage in this situation so a short recap of variation 1 i8 plus 4 protecting the horse Inside chariot, Red would try to create some space for his pieces to move, and Black would not allow it to happen, and this would be a trick move. Forcing Red to play R9 plus 2 before attacking the Red chariot again, and at this point in time, Black would have seized the initiative away from Red because his defensive formation was now intact, he would be able to counter any attack possible attacks by red and also be attacking red's uh, rather defenseless right flank so this would be variation 1 c8 plus 4 in variation 2 c8 plus 2 as a riverbank cannon uh, was discussed now one of the riverbank one of the uh, the characteristics of a riverbank river cannon is that it will help to secure and solidify the riverbank and red will adopt a much slower pace of attack. So R9 equals to 8 would be advocated as a trade of chariots would be offered. It will be advisable for red to accept the trade of chariots. If not, uh, as can be seen in this in this situation, Black could immediately retreat his cannon and attack the red chariot. And because the black chariot had already been developed as a foul chariot, the only safe spot would be R3 equals to 4 later on. And uh, this would be a rather congest congested situation. And as can be seen, if the chariot were moved away, Black would not have the option of playing p3 plus 1 and the efficiency of this red cannon would be greatly greatly decreased. So red cannot be satisfied with this situation and hence uh, accepting to trade chariots would be a better option in this situation. Now sacrificing the pawn to develop this chariot would be suggested as the correct move to make. Uh, C6 equals to 7 would not be a good idea and of course if red if black simply captured the pawn the red riverbank cannon would now be targeting the elephant and thus discourage black from playing h8 plus 7 immediately black would have to make a move e3 plus 5 whereas red would now develop his right uh, left flank sorry so this is why the riverbank uh, the riverbank cannon would not be a good uh, would be powerful in this sense and thus that is why black would choose not to capture or accept the trade of pawns however c6 equals to 7 would not be a good idea as uh, black was prepared to charge his pawn across the river to capture the red horse because black would simply uh, sac sacrifice this pawn and even his elephant and choose to be aggressive with this variation okay. Uh, of the training horses red would still have a slight advantage and uh, red would still have a slight advantage because the horse still cannot advance or it will be a checkmate a smart cannon checkmate now uh, after capturing the central pawn, Red would be able to uh, change or modify his position as needed. So Red would still have a slight advantage, but uh, the pressure that has been applied on this file by the black cannons would be tremendous. So c6 equals to 7 uh, is, might be a viable option, but uh, e3 plus 5 would ensure that black solidify his position.
So red would capture and black would develop his right chariot. And as can be seen, black's left flank is still undeveloped, although red would have uh, gained a pawn that crossed the river. Uh, at this point in time, it would be advisable to adv advance the pawn. In developing the left flank would not be an option because threatening to capture the pawn, forcing it forward, and black would have obtained the initiative. Because uh, at this time, it would be threatening to capture the horse. If it moved to the riverbank, black would simply play p3 plus 1. So if black tried to play e7 plus 9, capturing the pawn, and black would manage to have in, uh, wrestled the initiative away from red because red would now definitely lose an elephant which is quite a big deal in this situation so h8 plus 7 would not be viable neither would, would uh, h3 plus 4 be viable at this point because again a trade-off pawns And black would now be threatening to gain material, forcing the horse to move away. And again, the red elephant would now be captured because uh, it cannot be protected and it will be an immediate fork uh, by the black chariot. So as can be seen in this situation, although red had a pawn that crossed the river, uh, the pieces did not have much good backup and red's formation was rather fragile. So that is why p3 plus 1 to advance the pawn was suggested in the book. Again, trade of pawns. At this point, black's pawn sacrifice would be compensated by better or much better development of his pieces. And black can be satisfied uh, very much with his outcome because now red will be placed in a dilemma. If red tried to protect the horse with r9 plus 2, uh, the entire left flank would be very congested and red, black could simply capture the pawn. And uh, red would have wasted two moves to move a pawn that was simply captured by black. So that is why c8 plus 2 uh, would not be a good idea either. So in the third variation, Red would choose to go slow and steady, again tempting Black to deliver a skewer, which Black must do or the efficiency of this cannon would be greatly decreased. It would not be a good idea to play R9 equals to 8 because after trading chariots, and red would capture the central pawn. If earlier on, if red did not capture this pawn, there will be an attack by the red cannon and chariot combination at this uh, in this flank, and it's very empty and very vulnerable. So red would have captured the central pawn and still have an advantage, which is why r9 equals to 8 would not be feasible, and instead, black must be very aggressive with c6 plus 5. And now, of course, this would prompt a trade of cannons by red. Check. And the cannons would be traded. And again, red would play r9 equals to 8, which red must accept. Uh, red cannot play... Sorry. And then equals to 8, red cannot play r2 equals to 3 or it will be a fork. And once this horse were allowed to attack, uh, red would be in deep trouble. So r2 equals to 3 was not viable and neither would r2 equals to 4 be. So red, if r2 equals to 4 played because the horse is selling, black could continue to attack with his chariot. And after trading chariots, Black would be much, much better because, as can be seen, both his horses have much room for development while the red horses uh, would still take some uh, effort to be developed. If red played r9 equals to 8, 
split with a uh, black with a steel would also have a multitude of options like the central cannon etc uh, to play so black would uh, black would have a significant advantage by this point if r2 equals to 4 were played <coughs> so after trading chariots uh, the situation on the board would become much the pace of the get uh, pace would be much much slower And as can be seen, uh, Black would try to offer a trade of material because uh, the the positioning or the mobility of the pieces would be great, much greater than uh, Red's. And Red would still have uh, to find a way to try to develop both horses. So uh, in this variation, our H8 plus 7 uh, would seem to be to Black's advantage. Finally, the last variation in the book, variation 4, of the 5-7 cannons to attack. Now, there were two sub-variations in this uh, for this variation. First would be E7 plus 5, and the other would be E3 plus 5. Now, both variations uh, would have different implications. For E7 plus 5, protecting the horse, Black would use his pawn rank cannon to threaten to capture the uh, red pawn to attack the red chariot, which of course red will not allow. And in this situation, the red red's left chariot uh, should be developed as a foul chariot. Developing it as a rank chariot would be a big mistake because red would simply play a c6 plus 4 and still threaten to tra attack the uh, pawn 3 plus 4 and with this move c6 equals to 1 again the red chariot was would be threatened and as can be seen uh, the position of the back pieces will be much much superior black could now be prepared to push the pawn forward to capture the red chariot and if red tried to play uh, R4, you say R4 equals to 2, the pawn will be captured, and again, uh, the space that the red pieces can move would be greatly inhibited. Instead, uh, black, there, was, there will be much room for black to maneuver his pieces, and the black cannons would have now controlled the very important red pawn rank. So, in this situation, variation, uh, in, this, in this position, it would be better for red to develop his left chariot as a foul chariot and uh, at this point in time red uh, sorry black could also consider c6 plus 3 and forcing red to capture the pawn if not if red tried to play uh, to try to capture the black horse the black horse would simply develop threatening to capture the red chariot and as can be seen the red chariot cannot uh, retreat over here nor can it retreat uh, can, nor can it advance one move because these two intersections will be in the scope of the black chariot uh, black horse sorry and the only legal move will be r7 plus 2 and at this time ahead uh, red would have to find at least we have to use at least another one or two moves to try to get his chariot to a more favorable or uh, threatening position so r3 equals to 7 is not advocated and red should capture the the central pawn therefore and it will be an even situation red will be attacking very aggressively along the central file but uh, his left red's left flank would be uh, would be limit, congested, and the red would have to use at least one or two moves to develop this uh, chariot. And black the black cannons would now be a threat, whereby black would have many options to attack or defend, depending on how red would uh, play the game in the mid game phase. So that is why c3 plus one would be a viable alternative. And uh, in the main line, oh sorry, in version 4, 4a, 
uh, red was sorry black was suggested to play c2 equals 7 to trade this will force a trade of chariots and it r3 equals to 4 would be the sound move in this situation it would be a pointless or great mistake to play r3 equals to 7 because after trading chariots black will grab the initiative now uh, the black horse once unleashed it will now be prepared to threaten to play h6 plus 4 etc and to also to capture the red horse at this point in time so if red tried to protect the horse by moving away uh, the black horse would, be, would advance and we would have a terrible time ahead so that is why r3 equals to 4 and not r3 equals to 7 is advocated but after trading chariots black would still have a very playable game and red would uh, still be striving to try to develop his pieces and his left and his left um, uh, flank would be a concept, would be an issue that he must try to deal with. So in variation 4a, black would still have a playable game. Now that will be playing e7 plus 5. Now in variation 4b, because e3 plus 5 was played, black can be black would signal that he will be prepared to develop his right chariot as a kingside chariot attacking the horse protecting the horse developing the left flank advancing the cannon and the kingside chariot will now be will now be available and it will be made in, in just in time because if r9 equals 8 will play black could simply play r4 plus 6 control the central uh, control red spawn rank and also threaten to attack the red chariot while limiting the movement of the left chariot now uh, at this point in time c2 equals to 4 is not advisable because red will simply be aggressive and with sorry uh, c5, sorry, c5 plus 4 Red would simply be aggressive by capturing the central pawn, hoping to trade materials such that the red chariot will now be freed. Again, c6 plus 3 is advocated, but c6 plus 4 would be frowned upon because it will simply threaten to capture material or trade cannons. And at this point in time, the black cannons will be very, very, very vulnerable to attack. So that is why, uh, if black tried to cap sorry, if black tried to capture the central cannon, uh, red will simply capture c4 minus two and gain material. So that is why r4 plus six would be a timely move instead of c2 equals to four. And this is one commonly used tactic, whereby the black uh, red cannon is advanced, where you will be protected by the. Uh, red horse and red will now threaten to capture the black cannon forcing it to retreat uh, it would not be a good idea to play r2 uh, c2 plus one whereby black would try to uh, block the red horse so that he could capture the red cannon this would in effect be a trade of cannons red will simply accept check and as can be seen, red would have a significant advantage at this point in time because uh, black's left flank was still very congested. The horse had yet to move here, and red could continue with a variety of options to attack along the central fall, etc. So that is why it would be better for black to retreat the cannon. Now at this point in time, things will only get much more complicated. Uh, there were three options by c5 plus 4 is the advocated one c p1 plus uh, p5 plus 1 advancing the central pawn is not a good idea because black could counter with c6 plus 3 check and black would still have a very very playable game he will sacrifice his horse 
but he would now threaten to capture the advisor and then the elephants and the the loss or the sacrifice of this horse would crack will allow black to crack open red's defense so that is why p5 plus one uh, is not a good idea and there's a, there was another sub variation in given the book whereby red will simply capture the uh, sorry black will simply capture the offending red central pawn Okay, and red would have gained material uh, in the form of a black elephant. Red would have a slight advantage in this situation as he will now be prepared to capture the uh, black cannon. And if the black cannon moved c2 equals to 3, say, red would simply capture the pawn, threatening to capture, capture the black cannon, threatening to capture the red. Uh, to capture the black chariot and this would force black to make this move and as can be seen uh, the position of the red pieces would be much much better than blacks whereby uh, the, the horse sorry the black chariot would still need development the pawns although it, uh, it was prepared to cross the river uh, would still give black a very confined and close position so if p5 plus 1 were played, red could have the option of playing r, r5, r7 equals to 5, etc. So uh, c6 plus 3 was advocated, not p5 plus 1. And red would attack the horse, check. Again, black could have a playable game as mentioned earlier. In another variation, in, instead of um, p5 plus 1, what would happen if p7 plus 1 were played as red would try to attack the black horse on his file. Capturing the pawn. And again, black now would be threatening to capture the advisor. And uh, although red had a pawn that crossed the river, uh, black could have a very playable game on his hands. So c5 plus 4 is advocated. Okay, c2 equals to 4, retreating the uh, cannon to safety. But unfortunately, uh, the pawn was now advanced. Now this will be a roughly e equivalent situation for both players at this point in time. One, then black can be satisfied, and red uh, could also do with... So. So this wraps up the final sub variation of the discussion on various uh, opening variations in the Central Canon versus Sandwich Horse Defense Treaties. Now uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video series. It has taken me well over one year just to record all the bots. Uh, I the earlier bots I was still experimenting and I'm trying to improve uh, by the video. I hope you have enjoyed the work that I've done and again um, the central cannon is king of the Shang-Chi opening for red but uh, although this greenhouse defense is much more commonly seen, black sandwich horse defense would still be be considered to be a viable and orthodox counter to the red cannons and even today uh, the sandwich horse defense is still very often seen so uh, I do not uh, expect everybody to play the sandwich horse defense as black but uh, as mentioned many times in previous videos Grandmaster Hurong Hua's uh, book this short small opening book on the Central Canon versus Sandwich Horse Defense Treaties is considered to be one of the best better books in Shangxi for the past few decades because the Grandmaster shared his insights on how to evaluate various, posi various positions in the opening. So I uh, hope you have enjoyed this very lengthy video tutorial series and if you like my work please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.